Hey, 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 welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show. How you doing, my man? I'm living. I'm surviving. Trying to surviving. keep up with that water challenge. Hey, props to you. Props to you. And if any of y'all don't know what he's talking about, uh, Facebook uh, group change. We are getting healthy this year. A new challenge every month. This first challenge in January is the water challenge. Simple challenges too, by the way. Drink more water. Stay healthy. You can't beat it. Stay Join hydrated, my friends. So, um, this episode is all about one thing and one thing only. The National Football League. And, you know. Now, real quick. Before we go into the games, I have a weird National Football League stat for you. Okay. I heard it today a couple hours ago and I wanted to share. Do you really how many years did Tom Brady play in the NFL? Was it God, I want to say 23? 22, 23 years. We'll say that. NFL crazy NFL stat. He never took a snap in a football game that his team was eliminated from the playoffs mathematically in his entire career. Say that again. I want that to sink in. He never took a snap in a football game, a professional football game, where the team he was playing for was mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. That doesn't every sound year, right. every year that he started and took a snap from that uh for his career, his team was never mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. That's right, because the year they sucked, he got injured. Okay. Okay. It was a weird, crazy stat that I'm like. Wow, you're you're right. Even in his last year with Tampa Bay, because they lost Carter Brown. I mean, they were never mathematically eliminated. I have a crazy stat for you. What's that? Have you noticed in in these playoffs for this year? This is the first time in twenty some odd years mm -hmm. that a Manning or a Brady has not been in the playoffs. Yeah, for the last 18 years, I think it was, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Neither one of those actually played a game played a game this year. This is the first year ever that neither one of them has took a snap. And uh, not being funny? But, pro but props to Brady, I mean, because Manning retired back in 15. Yeah. Peyton. When did Eli retire? He, he it was retired after. two years ago, wasn't it? I say it was after Peyton, wasn't it? Yeah, it was after. Because um, Daniel Jones has been the starter for two years. Dang, starting football for two years and get the bank. That'd be awesome. Must be nice. All right. Must be. So... Just before we get to the upcoming portion of the playoffs, I want to just recap the uh, divisional round. We're going to start in the NFC because I'm going to make you wait. Um, which one should I start with? Let's 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 do the 49ers and the um and the Packers first. And okay. I'm just going to say this, and then you can either piggyback off of it, go in a different direction. That was Green Bay's game to lose, and they did. Um, yeah. I mean, I believe Love threw a last last drive interception that kind of sealed it for San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, did the 49ers win the game or did Green Bay lose it? I mean, six one half dozen the other. But, yeah, Green Bay had a great shot of pulling off the upset. And they, they, I believe they should have won. I wouldn't have been mad either way, no matter who won. I got no skin I, in that game. 
I don't think it would have been too close if it wasn't raining. Like I think 49ers probably would have had, you know, another seven points on them. It might have they might have won by 10 versus three. Uh I think the weather did contribute to Slender. And then Debo getting hurt, obviously. Uh yeah. but yeah, they were very uh very evenly matched, I think. Um and Green Bay kind of put the what they call it, the blueprint on how to play them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right now. Lions and the uh, Buccaneers. I don't think this game was as close as the score uh, uh, had it. I think the Lions kept them in it because it seemed like at times they were playing it safe instead of doing what they needed to do. But they finally ended up pulling away. Again, because Baker threw interception at the end um that kind of sealed it i mean they were going back and forth for a minute you know detroit would score tampa would score detroit would score tampa would score i think um i i believe it was just before halftime baker was like rolling to the right and as he was falling he threw the ball down mm -hmm. um re replay shows his calf was down before he released the ball so technically it should have been a sack you know, the Lions should have challenged that. But the very next play, Tampa Bay scored the touchdown on the swing pa on the uh, swing pass to uh, – or screen pass to the running back. So, uh, you know, if they would have challenged that, probably that score wouldn't have happened. And then, you know, it might have not have been as close. But I think um, – yeah, I mean, I can't disagree. I, I think both teams kind of played it too safe. And then to the end, the Tampa Bay started pressing, and then, you know, Detroit took care of business. The uh, divisional round, you had the uh, – I uh, almost called them the Jaguars. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> no, the Ravens. Do you think that they genuinely had trouble for that first half or they were overlooking the opponent? already thinking they were in the AFC championship game? No, I generally think that uh, D'Amico Ryan, uh, DeMar DeMarco yeah. Ryan, D'Amico Ryan, name? yeah, he's Ryan. the coach of the Texans. He he had a, he had a great game plan for Baltimore and, and, you know, Lamar didn't win with his arm in that game. He, he ran, you know, yeah. his legs is what, is what the difference was. Um, I think the game was just a little bit too big for that young group of, of the Houston Texans. And, you know, I, J John, no, what's Joe Harbaugh? John, what's the John Harbaugh? The, Jim is the one from Michigan that's going to be coaching the Chargers. Yeah. Okay. J John Harbaugh, uh, he, I mean, he's going he's gonna to be a Hall of Fame coach. So they made one hell of a, you know, good adjustments at halftime and then just basically walked away with it. Okay. Now I'm gonna get. To I, the I don't final. think I don't I don't think that the Texans had enough bricks in their shorts to hang with them. I'm gonna get to that final game in a second, but I want to talk about the other three losers in the divisional round: the Texans, the Packers, and the Buccaneers. And this is my theory. I'm probably wrong about it, but this is just the way I feel about it because of the way they played and could have won those games. I feel that they were very happy to be in the position that they were at, but the common denominator with their opponents was their opponents all wanted to get to the next step a lot, a lot more than they did. Um, I could be reaching. I mean, I can't necessarily co-sign that statement. Um, but I think all three teams that lost are not necessarily okay with losing, but content on how their season went, maybe with the exception of Tampa Bay. Because, you know, I think Baker thinks that he's, you know, the bee's knees, and he's really not. But, you know, you got to look at Jordan Love, you know, first year 
out from under Aaron Rodgers' thumb, you know, played really well. I mean, probably they are the team that if there was a huge disappointment in the locker room, they're probably pissed at themselves because they knew they were, you know, that close from, you know, being in San Francisco. Um, I'll tell you what, if ever there was a farm system for quarterbacks in the NFL, it's Green Bay. I mean, I guess Green Bay was playing San Francisco, weren't they? So Green Bay would be at Detroit yeah. if that was the case. So they, you know, they were close to, you know, feeling that way. Uh, but, I, you know, Houston, I think, yeah, they are completely happy with how their season went. Rookie quarterback, rookie head coach, rookie wide receiver. Didn't they only win four games last year? Mm, yeah, I think. I mean, you know, D'Amico Ryan should be coach of the year, or, you no know, doubt. right there at the top. I mean, no he, doubt. He, he, did his, he did the damn thing, as you say. He stood on business. So I'm glad I'm glad we we both agree that D'Amico should be coach of the year. Who is your MVP? Lamar Jackson. Without, I mean, hands down, unanimous. I can't, I can't say no to that. All right, that other divisional game, we're gonna go in a little more in depth with it. Kansas City at Buffalo, and I'm just gonna say this, and I'm gonna leave the floor completely to you. Buffalo had everything they wanted in this game. It's a home game. We already beat them this year. We've got the tools. We've got the confidence. Yet they Hold didn't on. do it. They won the game this year, but they didn't beat us. You know what I mean when I say beat? They didn't. They I'm just didn't. saying they didn't beat us. Kadarius Tony, if his ass would have lined up on sides, we that game would have been an arrowhead instead of Buffalo this past weekend. Vegas beat you. Anyway, um, Vegas wasn't game. playing. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So, yes, you know, Buffalo has been saying for the past few years, you know, I, we want the Kansas City Chiefs. We want Patrick Mahomes in Buffalo. They and got it, and they shit the bed. Sometimes, you know, be careful of what you ask for because you just might get it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we scored. We went up ahead with. I think like 13 minutes left in the game. So Buffalo had every opportunity to win that game. I I don't know if you heard Bill Cower after the game. Mm -mm. I agree with him 100%. If you looked at that game, Buffalo, especially in the first half, they had they were stretching the horizontal part of the field. You know, from sideline to sideline, those long plays and they were they were doing damage to Kansas City. But when Spad figured it out, oh my god. They couldn't do any of that in the second half and they had no vertical game. They had no yeah, long plays. Yeah, their vertical game was trash and our and I, you know our defensive backs are, are are pretty top tier. Them young cats are pretty good. Um I, I'll give it to Buffalo. They came in with a hell of an offensive scheme with the extra offensive linemen to help block for the running game. And, you know, they just pretty much just pushed through our defensive line like a hot knife through butter. I mean, they just they just ran us over the entire first half. But once we made them basically one-dimensional, which is you're you're not going to run no more. You're, you're not going to run no more. That's when the game changed. And you know, Cook couldn't couldn't gain two yards, you know. And then in the win, you know, uh Allen couldn't couldn't hit a parked car. I mean, it was just it was just it was fun to watch. I think I mean, Allen did the most he could with what he had. He had a couple of receivers I mean, out, didn't he? He had one, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis, um, okay. Who who, you know, in the thirteen second game was the one that had like a hundred thousand yards and five million touchdowns against us uh, in that game. Uh, but you know, and yes, he had some receivers that uh, you know, dropped some passes. I don't feel bad because as a Chiefs fan, we've been dealing that bullshit all year long. You know, I no. was very excited to see MVS make a couple catches. I was actually shocked. I was like, wow, you know, he's got enough glue on his gloves. I like that, you know, keep it up. Uh, but Allen did make some serious mistakes. Um, yeah. And I think that's where the difference between Mahomes and Allen is. 
you know, Two Allen is always stood out, not involving either quarterback, but other players to me. Um, if you look at the Buffalo offense, Diggs didn't do much of anything. And if you look at Why Kansas City's that? offense, Pacheco showed out again. Right, but why didn't Diggs do anything? Well, didn't you have, um, what's his name on him? Um, exactly. Legereus Sneed. Yeah, Sneed, thank you. Yeah, that that up until that coffin corner touchdown catch hadn't given up a touchdown all year long. Right. That was his That was his first touchdown he gave up. I mean, but, you know, he shut down Tyree Kill the week before. I mean, he's been shutting the number one receiver down since week one. You know, and, and if you go back to when we played them here in Arrowhead, Diggs didn't have a big game either. Cook was the main guy. Um, and then you also have to look at how well our defense have played. You know, we lost Willie Gay in the first drive, and we lost Mike Edwards in the first drive, our safety and our middle linebacker. Now, will any uh, of those injuries affect this week? I'm not for sure. The only one I've heard about is Joe Thune, who's our left guard. I believe he strained his pec muscle. So no tear was just strained. So it, it, you know, if he's out, that could be troublesome against that Ravens defense. Um, but I want to go back to the quarterbacks real quick. Okay. Cause I owe John Elway and his whole legacy an apology. Cause a few weeks ago, I said that Josh Allen is basically the modern day version of John Elway. Mm. And if you look at it, you could say yes, but I, I, you know, John Elway in his younger years actually took the Broncos to Super Bowls, even though they lost and they got their, their brains kicked in. He still got him there. Josh has only been to one AFC championship game his entire career. He's lost the last two division games at home. Uh, I think last year he lost to the Bengals this year. He lost to us. Um, so I, I'm going to remove him and say he no longer reminds me of John Elway. The perfect example of who Josh Allen is, is Philip Rivers. Why did I know you were going to say that? I just, and, and I can't no, Phillip, see that now. Philip is the epitome of, you know, great arm, good quarterback. You would love to have him on your team. But when you have to make the play, when the plays matter, you cannot do it. You can't. And that was the difference between Mahomes and Allen. When Mahomes had to make a play, plays were made. When Allen had to make a play, he shit the bed. And I didn't see that Philip Rivers reference because I think it's spot on. Yeah. Um, you know, I go back to that last uh, I think it was just before the field goal attempt that, again, sorry, Buffalo fans went wide right. Uh, the, uh, you know, he threw it to, uh, I, I forget who, whoever his wide receiver was in the end zone, and mm -hmm. it skipped it. You know, he had Stefan Diggs wide open in the cross that probably would have gained another eight, nine yards, got a first down. Yeah, the they showed that. More. You know, I, he was looking to make the big play instead of a yeah, play. Those decisions are what are the difference between winning and losing. Josh Allen is a phenomenal quarterback. He's just not a championship quarterback. Will he ever get a championship? I don't know. I do also think that Buffalo Bills are cursed when it comes to Patrick Mahomes. 2017, we traded the farm to Buffalo for the number 10 pick to draft Patrick Mahomes. Mm, I did the, not know that. The very next year, they draft Josh Allen. That they would have kept their number 10 pick and drafted uh, Patrick Mahomes, you know, history would have been different. But I think we traded number one and a number two and the following year's number one to Buffalo in 2017 to move up in the 2017 draft to move up to the 10th spot and uh, drafted Mahomes. Interesting. And then he sat that year till the very last game and then started in 2018. The rest is history. All right. It's a uh, championship week. NFC championship. 
since the Niners are the top dog, they are hosting the Lions. Do you... Who? Let's start there. Who are you going with, the Niners or the Lions? I think this game is closer than people actually give it credit. You know, I, I, I think, what are they like? Can you look up the point spread if you haven't already? I think it's like they're seven or eight point favorites over the Lions. Let's see if they have that on our good friends at NFL.com. Let's go to championship week here. And no, we don't want the mock draft. Leave us alone with that. I think that the game is a lot closer than what the point spread is. I think the last time I seen it, it was, it was a pretty high point spread, like maybe a touchdown, um, maybe you know eight, eight and a half somewhere in that arena. Because I think I think the Ravens Chiefs game is like three and a half. Uh, of course, they spread. don't have this point point spreads on here. That's the way it goes in my world, right? Uh. You know, who should win? San Francisco should win the game. My gut tells me to say San Francisco is going to win. My football heart and my football eyes say look out for Detroit. I would not be at all surprised if Detroit beat San Francisco. One thing that I've um, heard and noticed people want one of two things they either want a lions chiefs super bowl or a ravens 49ers super bowl nobody's saying chiefs 49ers nobody's saying ravens lions i'm hearing lions chiefs or ravens 49ers that's interesting yeah, I, I I I believe the line or the 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 Ravens 49ers um both which would be rematches by the way. Well, not the Chiefs and the Lions. Yeah, they yeah. they opened up in week 1. Well, I mean they I think I'm talking about like season. I'm talking about in season. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you meant Super Bowl rematch. No, no. Um Okay, so I just looked it up. Yeah, 49ers is a seven point favorite. Okay. Ravens are Ravens are a three and a half point favorite over Kansas City. Um now, my heart wants to go with the Lions, but my head says the Niners are gonna win that game. I mean, you, you theoretically you would think that both home teams are gonna win. I mean, really, you know. Ravens have been, have been beating the brakes off of everybody, and then, and technically so has San Francisco, except for the Baltimore game. Um, but I'm, I'm going to get to the of, Chiefs game in a minute because that scares yeah, me. Yeah, that, there's that something about me. there's something about Detroit. They have an it factor, and I don't yeah. know if it's the head coach. I don't know if it's just the football gods are smiling down on them. But here, you know, before we actually take a, uh, 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 you know, swing at our picks here, I, I have a question. Do you do you subscribe to the uh, conspiracy theorists that the NFL has scripted somehow? You no, know, by I the logos not. of the not not even a little bit, not even like, a not bit. even no way, shape, or form. No, this scripted. this is not the WWE. These no, are no, things no, that's that you not what can't. I'm saying. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that they already knew at week one who was going to be in the Super Bowl and they're going to do whatever they can to do it. What I mean is there are conspiracy theorists and, and NFL is a money machine. Obviously, that's why they put the Chiefs Miami game on Peacock mm -hmm. or whatever but instead of anything else. But like, don't you think or do you subscribe to that maybe, okay, there's more money in this matchup versus this matchup so if there is a coin toss, you know, extra holding call here, whatever, that, you know, if it's that close that we can get this particular matchup, that the NFL is not going to do something like that? I can totally see that. 
Cause see, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the gray area. I do. And I don't like the football side of me doesn't want to believe in a script. Here's the thing. When you mention money, you cannot, me you can measure Apple by the amount of money they have. You can measure um, Disney by the amount of money they have. You, you can measure any fortune 500 company by the amount of money they have. The NFL is not measured by money. It's measured by a day of the week. They own an entire date on a calendar. That's how powerful they are. Yeah, I, but it also boils down to money. You know, well, yeah, I mean, how much but, money but they've am got I going that to make? much money? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely. Now you know, I don't. Have you seen all the TikTok things where they talk about the Super Bowl logo? You know, two years ago it was orange and yellow so that your team were the Rams and the Bengals and last year it was green and red which is the Chiefs and Eagles and this year it's purple and burgundy which is going to be the Ravens 49ers you know they've been saying that all year long have you seen those yeah I, I heard Aaron Rodgers mention that on some show but, but I, I, didn't give it a, I didn't give it a thought so here's the thing okay because every there's a this this conspiracy theorists that there's a script somewhere in there that that's rolling is, is starting to pick up some speed and gain some traction whether you know you and i subscribe to it or not there are hundreds of thousands of people out there that believe the nfl is scripted and you can go to any video and and they'll show you proof of how it is scripted hmm. some of it you're like you're like ah that's bullshit smack but the other stuff kind of like kind of makes you go hmm you know that that might be a point there my thing is this if i'm the nfl and this is gaining traction do i really want the 49ers and the ravens to be in the super bowl what's the one way to break that script that mm -hmm. script theory to either have the lions or the chiefs advance one way to break the script? I mean, yeah, because ever the script is supposedly is already written where the Ravens and the 49ers are going to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I mean, and I believe, you know, I believe it's not very out. Last year was the first year in a long time where both number one seeds made the Super Bowl. Hmm. I also believe last year was the first time. In a long time since the league MVP won the Super Bowl. Yeah, I did know that because usually I, I, I the league don't... MVP doesn't make it to the final round. Yeah, I think Aaron Rodgers was the last one that did it with the Packers. But I, I don't think that that mantra is going to hold true this year. I could be wrong, you know. Either way, I'm not disappointed as a fan of my team, uh, you know, because... Um, yeah, I didn't we'll, we'll get to, to the Chiefs and the Ravens here in a second, but if your theory is real, I'm asking and pleading to the NFL, next year's logo, make it black. But see, it has to be believable. You can't just automatically put, you know, like, uh, I don't know, who's the suckiest team this year? Panthers and the Raiders in the Super Bowl next year. It, it's not going to work. Well, we didn't exactly got to be suck. believable. We we turned it around. No, with no, the no, new no. Coach. I said this. I said the suckiest team, which would have been the Panthers. Yeah, you already mentioned the Raiders. Panthers are NFC. Raiders are AFC. So it's they could theoretically meet in Super Bowl. I just don't see the script being written like that. No, I, I don't either. I don't. I, I just don't believe it. But I do see a script where Taylor Swift and Eminem are battling for screen time during the Super Bowl. Just saying. I don't know, but I'll say this. Jason Kelsey, I didn't mind them cutting to him. Man, that was great, wasn't it? Yes, it was. That was awesome. Um, I do see the pan. See, you got me saying Panthers. The Panthers aren't in the Super Bowl, folks. The Ravens, Baltimore Ravens, I do see them winning Sunday. But if this game is within seven points or less, Going into the fourth quarter, I would not be surprised if Kansas City pulls it off. That's what they do. I don't think 
if it's 14 points or less in the fourth quarter, I think we have a shot. Mahomes is who that Mahomes is that guy. I mean, he scored I'm not 28 even points. Mahomes. I'm he saying that defense, points. That Chiefs yeah, defense, defense is going to capitalize off of a Ravens mistake. And they're going to either tie the game up or take the lead. I mean, I don't know, because the Chiefs have been very bad at takeaways this year. They're not very good at takeaways. Uh, they're, I think they're dead. One of the, you know, second to the last or almost dead last. This is the right last. time to get hot. And actually, attack. true, true, true. I, I think we're going to uh, slow down Baltimore. I think the first half might be Baltimore bullying us, but I have faith in our coaching staff to make adjustments. Um. I mean, I, you know, I would be surprised if the Chiefs pull this out. Okay, let me let me rephrase that. Would not be surprised if the Chiefs pulled this out. I'm rooting for the Chiefs, obviously, but I'll probably pick the Ravens to advance. Um, but, you know, with 15 on our side, we're never out of it. I would love to be Except back for on Christmas Bowl. Day. Uh, you know, even a broke clock is right twice a day. So, yeah. you know, everything can happen. Um. You know, so I, I think, you know, that it should be a close game. Um, I will say that the team is just looks and feels different watching them play against the Dolphins, watching them play against the Buffs, uh, I mean, the Bills. Um, this should be a tough one. And you know what? Ravens have only, Balt or uh, Lamar's only beaten Patrick Mahomes once. So I think, I think he, Mahomes is three and one against against Lamar and he's one and one in Baltimore against them if you look so, at the I Chiefs mean, if, if their losses the only way to beat them you've got your defense has to take chances and they have to go after him and I don't mean I don't I'm gonna mean be honest the only blitz. team he'll the kill a blitz team, the only team that beat us this year was the Raiders. Everybody else that won was because of something that we did. Untimely interception. Untimely penalty. Drop pass. Dropped pass. You know, we weren't beaten by anybody. The Raiders beat the brakes off us. Like, we, we weren't even paying them any attention. It was just, we kind of overlooked them, like... We could throw our helmets out there, and we just – it was a W just because we showed up. Well, the you got to admit, we, we were sitting there saying, hey, if the Broncos can do it. True. I mean, but, you know, and I don't even – yeah, the Broncos beat us by more than one touchdown, but Patrick Mahomes had the flu. You know, a lot of, a lot of guys were sick. So, I mean, okay, if you want to throw that in there, great. I mean, they were due. We beat them 16 in a row, you know. We beat them solidly for eight years. They were due one, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not worried about Baltimore just coming in and making it a 34 to 10 game. I don't see that. No, I mean we I haven't. Don't either. We haven't given up over 24 points all year long. Well, that that brings well, me 24 to, is know. the max that we've that we've given up. Okay, we're gonna wind this down, but that brings me to the point where we look at the camera. We honestly say what we feel. We're going points. AFC Championship first. Score. I got Ravens. Oh, I, I got the Ravens 33, Chiefs 27. You want to do a side bet? Because there's no way Baltimore's scoring 30 points with us. No way. No. What's our bet? What's our bet? I don't know. Whatever you say. 20 bucks? Oh. Sure, why not? There's no way they're going to score 30 points on us. No way. I could see 28 to 20. I could see 27, 24. I think the most that they might get is 26, 27 points. Maybe 28. They might score four touchdowns on us. Uh, I'm standing 30. by 33 to 27. So what do you got? Um, 28 to 27, Baltimore. Mm, you got a close one. Oh, yeah, it's going to be close. 
Sounds like Justin Tucker is going to be involved in that. Same with Booker. Yeah. NFC Championship game, Niners, Lions. I'm going to say Niners. I hate to say this, but Niners. And I'm going to say Niners 27, Lions 20. I'm going to go ahead and call it Lions 24, 49ers 17. Wow. 17 at home only in the NFC Championship game. Ooh. They only Look scored 20 last week. I definitely true. think the Lions, the Lions defense is better than the Packers. Very true. This is going to be interesting, folks. Can't wait to uh, recap these and uh, either see if I'm $20 lighter or heavier in the pockets come next week for the podcast. And, e and either way, like I tell all my Chiefs friends who are sweating this, though I'm in this Chiefs group, the Chiefs are playing with house money. There is absolutely no pressure on us. All the pressure is on Baltimore. All the pressure is on Lamar. We're playing with house. We're already winning when we get off the bus. I can't disagree with that. You're already the so world champs. Sit back, enjoy. You have done something that no other team has done. You've been to six consecutive AFC championship games or championship games in a row. Six in a row. No other, no other team has done that. And on that, take us on out of here. All righty. Love each other. Tomorrow's not promise. Remember that. Tomorrow is not promise. Take your PTO today. Love y'all. Good night, everybody. <laughs>